algorithms of oppression. So what does that mean? And how, how do search engines reinforce racism? Well, let me tell you. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm a doctor. I enjoy learning. And I've read this book that focuses on a really important subject. And I'll do my utmost best to present the key facts to you. So everybody knows that search engines are run, in fact, by advertising companies in terms of how revenue is obtained. This isn't new, you'll say, but the difficulty is that what you see on page one of a popular search engine, people just really think is fact. So then you say, OK, I know that it's got nothing to do with race. Well, no, because there's very high profile examples from several years ago in which if you searched a particular term relating to one ethnicity and a different ethnicity, you would get really different results. For example, if you search for black girls on page one, you would get pornography displayed, whereas this was not the same if you search for white girls. In addition, three black teens Image number one would be of three convicts, whereas image number one of three white teens would not be three convicts. This is fundamentally wrong. In addition, it's not just teens and girls, but if you look for professional haircuts, you'd have white people were shown as professional haircuts, unprofessional haircuts, black people were shown. This is just not right. and. It isn't just what's shown in a search, it's also thinking about the impact on small minority businesses. The book mentioned a well-established hairdresser, black hairdresser, who specialised in black people's haircuts. Now, when Yelp came along, it was so hard to find her small business because it was just listed under as all other hairdressers, missing her unique selling point that people really found perhaps the most important reason to go to her in the first place. That was omitted. And it's interesting. Facebook, Facebook has workers who perform constant moderation. And they actually are trying to suggest that people and policies are put in place to navigate and moderate content on the web. Sounds good, doesn't it? But unfortunately, shockingly bad racist content may actually proliferate and can be highly profitable and it then attracts the interest of at times the majority and not of the actual racialized minorities. The African-American professor and philosopher Colonel West has described the positionality of how the black community uh, depicted in the West this is that black people are as problem people rather than people with problems. Black people are often thought of as an abstraction and objects rather than individuals and people. And in fact, if you look at the Library of Congress, there's this direct relation to whiteness as the norm. So search results can hold records of whole human activity and power is held by controlling which records are visible. In essence, the search results hold so much great influence over the identity and boundaries of legitimate knowledge about minorities. Who actually has access to provide the network certainly impacts whether the information can be found and surfaced for anybody trying to look for this. And in part, this is because search engines and all databases look at a classification system. And in essence, if you're the person who's designed that classification system, you can decide what has been included and what should be excluded. Therefore, in essence, you control a lot of power. So classification systems are developed by the most powerful groups in society and the result is a marginalization of concepts outside the mainstream. So we if we inherit privilege, 
is based on a massive knowledge regime that foregrounds the, the structural inequalities of the past, reinforced by the vast stories of texts, images and sounds saved in archives, museums and libraries. And the attempts to address the digital divide in the US have been quite narrowly focused on the skills and capabilities of people of colour and women, and they don't actually question the historical and cul cultural development of science and technology and representations prioritised through digital technologies. So the uneven, exploitative global distribution of resource and labour in the information and communication ecosystems is actually very seldom mentioned. So what can we do about this? Well, this book actually suggests to overcome some of these challenges by tech companies hiring in experts. This could be people who have been recent graduates or advanced degree holders in black studies, ethnic studies, American Indian studies, gender and women's studies, Asian American studies. You'll notice the book's based about America. and But these people with that deep knowledge of history and critical thinking could actually really assist uh, the complex challenges that face today's society. That is if indeed the goal is of the technocracy. So this then exacerbated by these celebrations of multiculturalism and diversity that actually obscure the structural and societal oppression in fields such as education and information sciences, which are shaping the technological practices. Let me tell you about the concept of colour blindness. This is if when somebody says they don't see the person by the colour, they see the person as the person. And this disgenuinely purports a more humane and non-racist worldview. And research actually shows that people who are invested in colour blindness have been shown to be less empathetic towards others, more likely to be white, and more likely to condone or not actually be bothered by derogatory racial images viewed online or in social networks. And it's of note, Silicon Valley execs tend to embrace this colour blindness as if it's an asset and not a proven liability that precludes the use of racial information and does not allow any classifications or distinctions. I suspect in part this is because people are fearful to be sued, but it's important to understand that if you're not actually seeing the colour, it's very dangerous and it misses the point and it means you potentially don't see a culture. So today, August 2021, the book was written a while back, I looked at what does the internet think and put in black girls and white girls and this site aims to get the sentiment of if a term is viewed positively, negatively or neutrally. And in essence, they both looked close, but if you actually look at the statistics in further detail, you can see that black girls were viewed less positively than white girls and more negatively and more people were indifferent about white girls. That changes over time and I think it shows that these issues uh, still prevail even if not as apparent as some of the ones I have mentioned earlier. So making race the problem of those who are racially objectified particularly when seeking remedy from discriminatory practices, obscures the role of government and the public in solving systematic issues. And search engines tend to be optimised for the majority, which therefore suppresses the minorities, with the default being a white person. So I'd like to call you to embrace your identity and stand up because it's clear that any prejudice at a personal or systematic level is not acceptable. Interested if you could comment below, like, subscribe, and I shall see you next time. Take care.